Good afternoon. My talk will be on memories about language, challenges and opportunities of performing multilingual poetry. Reveries about language, words, sound, image, a reverie autour de la langue, mots sans image, sagnarigno yaziku, riech zvuk slika, are a series of immersive multilingual poetry recitals developed as part of my project Unbound, funded by the Language Act's 2018 and 2019 Small Grants Program. The aim of this project is to explore multilingual poetry practice in the contemporary context and across different media. During 2019 and 2020, I co-directed and directed three multilingual poetry recitals and performances. Other outputs of Unbound were a short video that will be shown at the end, a short film and my multilingual poetry collection, Reveries About Language. Imagined as textual, sonic and visual promenades inviting the public to immerse themselves in the multisensorial experience of poetry in English, French and Croatian, reveries about language recitals aim to show how the spoken word, sound and image interact to create a series of unbound or free expressions. They explore the various possibilities of multilingual poetry as an interdisciplinary art form that allows for a free experimentation with language. It makes language stutter, vibrate. As will be seen in the short video at the end, the actors' readings of the poems on stage are interweaved with one to two min minute computer generated animations of my photography and verses set to live encoded music created by the Estonian sound artist Alo Alik. And so before turning to the main challenges and opportunities, I'd like to say a few words about how the concept of reveries relates to my experience of multi-language. Reveries about language is a trilingual poem in English, French and Croatian I wrote at the very beginning of my practice in 2014. Yet it has taken me a long time to fully appropriate the reveries concept and understand its importance for my own practice. According to the Collins Dictionary, a reverie is a state of imagining or thinking about pleasant things as if you're dreaming. The Dictionnaire du Larousse defines it as activité mentale dirigée vers des pensées vagues, sans but précis, or as a mental activity of being lost in one's thoughts. The usage of the term reveries is ambiguous. It can mean daydreaming, but it can also refer to a state of being out of touch, out of place especially in present times, where the reality of the pandemic coupled with a feeling of disorientation has taken such a firm hold on our imagination and or imaginations that it has hindered our capacity to daydream. With hindsight, I think that the act of daydreaming lies embedded in all of the multilingual poems I have written. Reveries as a search for recovery of lost language or languages and the excavation of my fourth language, Arabic, that I used to speak with my grandmother during my first seven summers in Algeria, a shadow language that I have later forgotten. But reveries also in the sense of reinvasion of language. Seen in that way, the act of reveries looks both to the past and the future. It doesn't only encompass a nostalgic feeling for the thing lost. Instead, it questions and transcends nostalgia. It reopens the doors of memory and forgetting, or is evoked, is evoked by Hélène Sixou in her novel Rêverie de la femme sauvage. Une porte vient de s'entrebâiller dans la galerie oubli de ma mémoire, et pour la première fois, voici que la possibilité de retourner, voici que j'ai la possibilité de retourner en Algérie. So, what were the main challenges and opportunities of performing multilingual poetry? For the Italian philosopher Adriana Cavarero, the voice destabilizes language as a system that produces the subject. The voice stands in opposition to language, that is to the disciplining codes of language, to grammar and syntax. A recurring question for me in the process of co-directing and directing reveries was to decide how I should represent multivocality of my poetry on stage. This question might sound like a simple aesthetic choice, However, how I as the author choose to treat this question has consequences for how I as the author perceive and define myself as a multilingual subject that possesses a fractured or unified identity, or both. 
The question of voice that is played out differently in my poetry according to language automatically raises the question of hearing a poem in an unfamiliar language. Mixing or juxtaposing languages that the public might not understand has been a concern for me from the beginning of my writing practice. It has therefore been very encouraging to hear people uh, say that they enjoyed uh, hearing my poetry in an unfamiliar language, as the following comment from my recent online poetry recital shows. I particularly enjoyed hearing the cadences and the rhythms of the French and Croatian language poetry, fascinating and surprising. The second challenge and opportunity is the creative team and interpretation. Finding the right creative team was challenging in itself because of the knowledge of languages required. I was therefore very lucky to have worked with a fantastic multilingual team of collaborators, despite all the limitations imposed by time and budget, as well as the pandemic. Specific attention was given to the interpretation of Reverie's poems in order to achieve a polyphonic effect of the weaving of the different languages. And as illustration, here are some of the challenges and opportunities experienced by two of the readers, Robert Shantek and Bridget Napa. Whilst they both reported a similar experience of richness of the three languages, the layering of meaning and of rediscovering the beauty of mixing languages without creating a cacophony, they also highlighted some of the main challenges. So Robert was saying, the reading was challenging on multiple levels. First, to feel your poems, the exchange of languages, the effort of trying to respect each language's specific wording, rhythm, and melody, then combining that in a new ensemble, one piece, different instruments. And Brigid was saying that um, needing to pay close attention um, when two or three of us were reading a poem which contained three different languages and where I didn't understand the Croatian, reading along and listening closely was a challenge. Equally, the repetition of the poems in three different languages throughout the reading experience required a specific type of reading. So this kind of reading involves stressing different keywords in each of the languages of the poem to account for the fact that different listeners possess a different level of competence in the three languages. And finally, the creation of a multi-sensory experience, merging words, sound and image. As someone who does not have a background in media arts and technology, the creation of a multi-sensory experience that uses digital art technologies was the most challenging, but also the most exciting of all aspects. For example, when trying to make aesthetic choices about how to produce an, an immersive multilingual poetry experience for the listener, the question of the primacy of the spoken word and poetic verses on screen in relation to sound and computer generated graphics was discussed between Alo, the sound artist and myself more than once. We were faced also with the challenge of how to maintain a certain degree of visibility of the fragments of multilingual verses on the projection screen. Whilst we found these conversations frustrating at times, we both welcomed this challenge as it took us outside of our comfort zone and made us think about the importance of, produce, of producing a contemporary multilingual poetry performance. So thank you for listening. And I will now show the short video of the 2019 performance. And please note it contains some flashing images. Fatigué d'errer à travers les siècles, j'entrais dans un jardin andalou sans trouver le repos. Bientôt, j'allais à la dérive dans ces allées d'orangers et de cyprès, s'étendant à l'infini. Je marchais dans ces patios tranquilles entre les fontaines et les azuleros, respirant les senteurs d'ambre et de jasmin. Je traverse le territoire de mes langues comme on traverserait un désert, en écoutant les sons créés dans le silence, en quête de l'étoile bleue brillante. Je glisse sur les traits multiples du temps. Je lisse les courbes du tissu temporel. J'arrange les espaces infinis, velours rouge foncé, 
et je tombe dans les bras de la lettre U, que dans mes quêtes j'ai oubliée. My dreams are haunted by the emotional resonance of words, images. Froth. Froth, an embroidery on the bed of waves. Imperceptibly. He stands behind her and touches her naked shoulder almost imperceptibly. Vision. I am but a fleeting vision at the corner of your eye dancing. Feathers. The city receives her, enfolds her in its soft feathers. Petals, watching thoughts unfold like petals. Amber and jasmine, breathing in the scents of amber and jasmine. Cut, cut. Trčim za jezikom. Kad kad jezik za mnom trči, ispred, iza, iza, ispred, luda trka za vremenom u kojoj samo jedno pobjeđuje. Jezik i ja nikad ne trčimo zajedno. U njegovom ubojitom zagrljaju izvodima krobatski ples po užetu vremena i prostora. Moje tijelo savija se u ritmu otkucaja života na raskršću metonimije i metafore. Sjećanja se nanovo pišu. Osjećaj se utiskuju, odražavaju u ogledalu misli i ponovo padam u zagrljaj zvuka o zaboravljenog u mojim lutanjima sanjarenju. The nightingales are dreaming the songs of our summer, calling us to distant valleys. Slavuj, pjev našeg ljeta. Chant de notre été. We don't know, know how to respond to their call. Mi ne znamo zov. L'appel. Our souls not ready. Naše duše nespreme. Nos âmes. Under the autumn sky. Pod jesenjim nebom. Ciel. My body senses it won't survive the fall. Moje tijelo osjeća pad. La chute. When the first snow hits the ground, Prvi snijeg, zemlja, neg, we don't exchange the deadly seal of winter smrtni pečat zime, le saut mortel, for the nightingale song in the spring. Your heart tvoje srce, ton cœur, doesn't recognize što, ce que, what we miss. <laughs> 